I'm Perrin Desports. I'm one of the co-founders here at Polaris Healthcare Partners. We guide entrepreneurial dentists and healthcare professionals to build and ultimately exit successful group practices. All of our clients are what we call pre-private equity, meaning they're using bank funds to grow their business. It goes without saying that it doesn't matter what your growth strategy is if the bank won't fund it. And access to growth capital is the Achilles heel of every emerging group, yet so many continue to get this one key cornerstone wrong. One of the scenarios we see most often is that people who start their first or second location with one particular bank end up going to subsequent banks for locations three and four and maybe a third bank to five and six and so on and so forth. Ultimately, you end up running out of rope, literally due to subordinated uh, debt positions uh, with the existing banks, you just end up running out of capital because nobody's gonna continue to, to loan you money in locations seven and eight, nine and 10, and on down the line. Working with the bank you started with, a, re a traditional retail lender, is probably fine if your goal is to build a group practice of a handful of locations, three or four maybe, over an eight to 10 year period. You might be able to achieve that with your current lender because you're probably paying down principal at a fast enough rate to not set up, upset the apple cart of the lending bank. On the other hand, if your goal is to build, I don't know, six to eight to 10 locations over a much shorter time frame, probably four to five years, you really need to find a lender who will fund your vision. Those lenders are comfortable loaning money based on what your growth strategy is. This is true business to business lending and it usually carries a higher rate. The higher rate is attributed to the fact that the default rate risk goes up for those people building group practices. However, we tend to see people only focusing on the rate they get from a lender. Now banks are inherently risk averse. Dentists hardly ever default in a solo practice. Really, all of the, the dentist borrowers in locations one and two uh, are one of the lowest credit rate risks in the entire world of banking. You almost have to try to run a dental practice into the ground and bankrupt it. But when you start talking about building a multi-location group, those multi-location businesses are a lot more complicated they have diversified revenue streams, obviously multiple locations where the person guaranteeing the loan can't be everywhere all at once. You're really more of an entrepreneurial model uh, versus an owner operator model. Uh, and group practices, as you would well imagine, do carry a higher default rate risk to the bank. And that's reflected in the higher loan rate, uh, even if it is the same 10 year term. Those retail lenders are plentiful and they really do uh, tend to offer, for all intents and purposes, the same package, uh, a low cost of funds over the same usually 10 year term. They also have the same limited credit box, which means that they're probably only going to be comfortable loaning you money on the first or second location, but certainly not the fourth or fifth or eighth or tenth. And if you ever hear, um, uh, a relationship manager at a bank say, hey doc, we're a multi-billion dollar bank. We have more money than you could ever spend. That may be true, but it doesn't mean they're gonna loan it to you. And all too often they won't. Credit officers are the ones that make the lending decisions, not the relationship banker. And you need to, to get it in writing if they agree to fund your future vision. Here's a working example of the difference in rate. And this is something we hear quite often, just for an example, that you wanna buy or build one practice per year uh, and the bank is agreeing to loan you money at a 5% rate over a 10 year term. And you can see that at the end of that five uh, year trajectory, you hit a little bit over $2 million in total debt which is usually about the ceiling that most banks get comfortable with, up to $2 million, but not above it. You can see the total debt payments, the aggregate coverage ratio, and the debt to EBITDA ratio there. Um, 
And then when you start looking at the potential outcome, if you wanted to sell the business at the end of those five years, this is a business generating about 1.7 million in EBITDA. It might fetch about a six times EBITDA multiple in the sale market. So you have about a $10 million valuation. You pay some amount in taxes and obviously you pay off the debt and the net proceeds are about $5.66 million. Well, what does that look like for a lender that's charging a 7% rate? So this is full 2% higher on the rate, same 10 year term. You can see that the total amount of debt over those five years is not that much greater. Uh, the coverage ratios are, are very similar and the outcome upon sale is also similar. And this is a classic case of people focusing on the wrong aspect in their borrowing relationship. Their relationship with banks they think is successful when they have the lowest rate. And that is not the thing to focus on if you're going to build a group practice. If you're going to build, or if you're going to have one to two locations and that's it, then yeah, dirt cheap cost of funds is really what you're focused on. But if you're going to build a group, you would rather be connected to a lender who will fund your future vision. And here's what some of that might look like. Here is that same example, one practice per year at a 5% rate, uh, the one we just went through. But what would happen if a lender who was going to charge you 7% would actually agree to fund more acquisitions per year over that five-year period and agree to fund a, a higher volume of overall debt? They would allow you to create a larger business that generated more EBITDA that would value more highly and the net proceeds upon sale, less debt, less taxes are commensurately more in this scenario. Banks are important. Debt funds are the right vehicle to build a group practice beyond a shadow of a doubt, even in a rising rate environment. But this is a classic case of understanding the right way the game should be played as it relates to who your lender is and if they are going to agree agree to fund your future vision. If they do, you can build a bigger business that's more valuable and spins off more free cash flow along the way, certainly values more highly. The rate is not the thing to focus on. The commitment to fund your future vision is. The solution here for a growing group practice at least is one lender with something called a, a guidance facility or a credit facility for your future vision of growth. And it functions much like a line of credit would or a credit card, credit amount, uh, like you and I would think of in our personal lives. This is in the business context, but you, uh, you know how much the commitment is for, which tells you how many practices you can go out and acquire each year. And if you continue to operate the business as successfully as you have up to this point, that credit limit will refresh every year as well. And it's a great solution for a growing group. It is the appropriate solution for a growing group. So a guidance facility is knowing that you have that committed level of purchasing power every bit as much as you and I would think about a credit card. If you're gonna go into a department store and fill up a shopping cart with a bunch of stuff you wanna buy, and then have to call your bank to find how much of it you can actually buy or how much credit you qualify for, that defeats the entire purpose. You'd rather have a credit card and you'd rather know the credit limit and be able to buy as much stuff as you would like up to that limit. And that's what a credit facility looks like or a guidance facility looks like in terms of uh, working with a true business to business lender. If you like a lot of this type of uh, business related concepts, you can find more of it on our podcast. Our podcast is called Group Practice Accelerator and you can find it on all the main podcast channels, Apple Podcasts, Google, TuneIn, Spotify, Stitcher, all of those. I would also encourage you to subscribe to our news feed, which we send out on a weekly basis. Uh, it does have a link to the podcast. There are videos in it. There's a lot of written uh, blogs and white papers uh, and a lot of industry information. But for those who really love uh, these types of business concepts and want to improve their overall business knowledge, this is a great way to start. If you're interested in building a group practice and you don't know what you don't know, 
our discovery day sessions might be the right option for you. A discovery day is a one-on-one -on -one session uh, between an advisor and a client, and it's all about the fundamentals of group practices. But because it's one-on-one, -on -one, we can spend ample amount of time chasing rabbits down any hole you would like, getting the questions, uh, uh, getting answers to the questions that you know you have, but probably also uncovering questions that you didn't even know to ask. You didn't know what you didn't know. And in that context, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session is immensely beneficial. We get a lot of uh, nice reviews on those discovery day sessions uh, and our net promoter scores are extremely high in them. So I encourage you to, to consider that. And if you're looking to build a larger business, uh, a platform business, depending on when you're watching this video, you can join us in Fort Lauderdale, May 10th through 12th for building your enterprise platform. The QR code is there for more information. And as of this recording, uh, we, we do have availability. We're gonna cap that at 100 people and we expect the conference to sell out. If you got questions about your current loan structure, what a credit facility could do for you and your business, or anything in general about how we source growth capital for our clients, you can send me an email directly or book a call with one of us off the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about the services we offer our clients here at Polaris, you can find all of that on our website with a bunch of the free resources like our podcast that I mentioned before, uh, and the URL is right in front of you. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you got a lot out of this video.